someone um, who's young who has a lot of responsibilities at home. So as a young person, I cared for my mum. Um, my dad was around, but unfortunately he was in the army. So due to that, sometimes he spent quite a long period of time away. Um, so it was just me and my mum until I was nine, nearly 10, and my little brother came along. So without knowing, I suppose that kind of added to my caring responsibilities. So my mum has epilepsy and she's got brittle asthma as well. So she did tend to have quite a lot of seizures. So making sure that she was safe if she was having a seizure, that she hadn't banged her head, um, making sure that she was responsive, breathing, her, air, her airways were open, there was no choking risk, um, and nothing that ran her that she could bang her head on and cause a severe injury. Um, and you know, when she wasn't well, making sure that, you know, we, we would eat so that there was dinner on the table, um, do the cleaning, make sure that my uniform was clean so that I could go to school, make sure that mum had clean clothes as well and change her if, if she'd messed herself. Um, but to me, I didn't see that as caring. I saw that as my everyday norm. To me, it was normal. Well, the health professionals that looked after mum, I think deep down, they're the reason that I wanted to be a health professional myself. Um, they, they were just so, so supportive. And particularly when I was young, they never treated me like a child or made me feel like I was an idiot. They would keep me involved and, you know, they would be really supportive and they would talk to me. And I will always remember my mum's asthma consultant, Dr. Mahadeva. Um, he, he was just absolutely incredible. He would see me around the concourse when mum was in hospital. He'd come over and say hello. And if he found out that mum was staying in hospital, he'd have already gone and see her, seen her by the time I'd got back to her. And that to me just made me feel so safe and valued. Some of the medications that my mum would be on um, if she was having a fit, I would need to administer myself. Um, so they, they would be really supportive and show me how to administer this medication um, and make sure that I knew where everything was in the case of an emergency. So, I mean, as a nine-year-old, I was able to control my mum's nebulizer get the oxygen tank and sort out her oxygen, um, administer rectal diazepam, um, and making sure that she'd remembered to take her medication as well. That that was always very important. When, when my dad was away in the army, um, not only did I have mum to come and look after if she wasn't very well, but I also had this little tiny human being as well. I'd be quite cautious about her potentially holding him especially if she'd had a seizure and you know there, it, there was a chance that she may have another one um, so I'd make sure that I was doing kind of the, the motherly duties the most difficult things were definitely when mum wasn't well and the ambulance was on its way because it was always the unknowing um, when I was eight years old my mum actually stopped breathing and for an eight-year-old that, that well for anybody to see their relative stop breathing in front of them is traumatic but for me being eight years old um, I think it affected me a lot more than I thought it would but the school did make sure that I had counselling there um, to make sure that I, I talked about it and I think that being a young carer that's something that is important and sharing your feelings can really really help you um, so my mum, she actually, um, once she'd had my brother, she went to a group for some support 
and um, that was support for her and my brother. And I, I was sat with with the family while um, while they were talking about joining this group. And the lady who ran the organisation said to me, "What support do you get?" Her saying that it was it kind of then clicked and made sense a little bit, and it made me realise that actually. I'm not different and I'm not weird like everyone was saying at school. It's just that I had a responsibility that other people potentially didn't have or didn't have an understanding or an awareness of. I did, I did feel quite isolated and lonely. So yeah, when, when I um, used to play out with friends and I'd get a text from mum saying, can you come home? Um, you know, pe people would often just assume that I just had a curfew and that I had strict parents but that wasn't the case and due to that I did get bullied quite a lot. I think it definitely had an impact on my education um, because where, particularly when my dad was away in the army um, when I had homework, um, if my mum was well, wasn't very well, I didn't necessarily have time to complete my homework. Or if I didn't know how to do my homework, if mum was unwell and she would had a fit, and also she's got dyslexia as well, so she found it quite difficult. I, di I didn't have that support when dad was away. So I think that had an impact and some teachers were very understanding of that and they would give me extra time and support. But some teachers, however, weren't very understanding of that and they just kind of labelled it as laziness, but that wasn't the case. But sometimes I did have to miss school when there was, there was no one to look after me. When it came to actually deciding that I needed to move away from home to do the training to become a nurse, that's when I felt guilty the most. It, it was such a hard decision because, one, it was all that I'd ever known, you know, li living with my family and ca caring. Um, but I felt guilty and I felt like I was almost being selfish because I was moving away for a fresh start to try and figure out who I really am. And I felt guilty because I was moving moving away and actually that would be leaving my little brother who I always used to care for to pick up more of the responsibilities. Sense 33 always believed in me when I didn't. I knew that if I ever needed anyone to talk to, someone was there. The relationship with my mum, um, we, like, I, I love my mum to absolute pieces. Um, we we're so, so close, um, which makes me miss her more, the fact that I'm, I'm living away and you know I miss the rest of my family. Be, being a young carer, um, and it has helped me to be a, be a caring person not just for my mum, but for people. I, I, I just want to help people. And that has definitely helped me onto my journey into becoming a registered nurse. And now it's my job to care for people every day. And I love it. Well, I've, I've just learned to be, to be calm in situations growing up because, you know, if mum was to stop breathing in front of me, there, there was no reason to panic and get myself worked up because phoning for the ambulance I needed to be calm and I needed to have a calm voice so I could tell them exactly what was going on. If I start panicking that can potentially have an impact on the situation. It's very important to find out who, who lives at home with this patient. Are they an elderly relative? Is it is it partner? Or is it 
a, a teenager or a child who who is supporting this patient at home i just feel that it is important to to make sure that talking about being a young carer isn't a taboo subject really even being a young adult carer or a carer it, it shouldn't be a tab taboo subject um i believe that it's something that needs to be discussed to ensure that people are getting support particularly in times like now where we're currently living through the middle of a pandemic it's now more than ever that young carers and carers need support some health professionals were quite kind of put off about it because it's quite quite invasive and quite intrusive and quite personal but actually i don't think there's any point in shying away from the question i think it, it it's important because actually by asking that question if that individual wasn't aware of that before you can potentially open open many doors for them gateways for offering support respite e even further education on what it is that they're doing <laughs>